welcome to Kombucha Chem Academy. And remember, our purpose here is to demystify the science behind kombucha, kombucha brewing, and kombucha analysis. If you're new here, my name is John, and I'm a co-founder of Cultured Analysis. This is a company that's dedicated to quality analysis and consulting in the kombucha and brewed beverages industry. The purpose of today's video is actually twofold. We want to introduce to you the core four analysis package offered by Cultured Analysis, which is actually an excellent 30,000 foot view of the quality and health of your kombucha product. Um, if you were to order a core four analysis from us, you would actually get um, per brew um, measurement of pH, titratable acidity, sugar, and also ABV, which is alcohol by volume. Now the second part of the video is actually going to focus on the first aspect of the core four analysis, which is pH. So let's stop back just a little bit and uh, recognize that every aspect of the core four measurement that we make is an example of what we would call in chemistry a quantitative analysis or measurement. So anytime we make a quantitative measurement, we're actually asking how much of a particular chemical component is in our kombucha. More specifically, we might want to couch this in terms of concentration. So a concentration is a little bit more specific. What we're actually measuring here is the amount of a given chemical component present in a given amount of solution or kombucha. So let's focus in on the first aspect of the core four measurement, which is going to be pH. Now pH is probably the most common analytical measurement um, that anybody makes in the kombucha industry. I'm going to assume that most brewers probably measure the pH of their brews as they brew. So in order to basically understand pH, we have to go back to a few simple definitions. One simple definition of pH is given here. It's a measurement of the acidity in a solution based on the amount of free hydrogen ion present in that solution. Now to better understand this, we have to understand what an acid actually is. So in chemistry, our simple definition or one simple definition of an acid is this. An acid is considered to be a good source of hydrogen ion in aqueous solution. That means dissolved in water. So a good example of this would be an acid that many of us are already familiar with. This is the mineral acid, hydrochloric acid, or HCl. Now if I were to take HCl and dissolve it into water, that's the AQ or aqueous solution that we make, what ends up happening is we break the chemical bond that exists between the hydrogen and the chlorine, and we end up getting the component ions back out. So in other words, we would state that one molecule of hydrochloric acid dissociates into hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Okay, so these are the two parts that we get when we break this chemical bond. Now we state that an acid like HCl is a strong acid, and what that means is that this acid is going to dissociate 100% into hydrogen ion and chloride ion. So what this would mean is that if I had 100 molecules of hydrochloric acid, I would get upon dissociation 100 molecules of the hydrogen ion, which is what we're interested in measuring here. So to get a good grip on what we mean by the quantitative aspect of pH, we have to come back down to something that I think most of us are quite familiar with, which is the pH scale here. So we can think of the pH scale as something of a number line, starting at zero, moving through the neutral point of seven, and on to a high value of 14 here. Now, when we look at this number line and we make a pH measurement, and by the way, how do we make a pH measurement? Well, we do that using one of several techniques. We can do that, for example, with a pH electrode coupled to a pH meter. We could use pH test strips or even some other colorimetric indicator that gives us an idea of what the pH of a solution happens to be. But once we obtain a pH value, what does it actually mean to us? All right, so if we're in the kombucha world, we might actually have a pH that falls somewhere here on the pH scale, somewhere, let's say, around 3 or 3.5. Now what this tells us is that the pH is less than the neutral point of 7, and that tells us that this is an acidic solution. And by acidic, we mean that the um, primary ion existing in solution is going to be the hydrogen ion, which we're interested in. 
Now, if the pH moves above the neutral point of seven, we say that the solution takes on basic properties. And these base properties come from um, the hydroxide ion, or OH1 minus here. That's gonna be the predominant ion that we find in a basic solution. Now, in the middle here, we have the neutral point. Now, what that actually means is where we have the concentration of the hydrogen ion in solution from the acid exactly uh, being equivalent to the concentration of the hydroxide ion that we have from the base. And these two ions, as we see down here, can combine an aqueous solution to give us a molecule of water. And we know that water, of course, in its pure form is neutral, meaning that it has a pH of seven. So once we actually have a measured value of pH, say from a pH electrode and meter, what does that actually mean in terms of the actual concentration of the hydrogen ion that we're interested in? Well, to be able to address this, we have to go back to a more mathematical definition of pH, which I give you over here on the right-hand side of the board. pH is defined as the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration in solution. And we'll come back and talk more specifically about this concentration unit in just a moment. Now, in order to get back to the actual concentration, which is what we're interested in, we actually have to rearrange and manipulate this equation a little bit. So we ultimately have to solve for the hydrogen ion equation by undoing the negative base 10 logarithm. And we can do that with the inverse um, key on the calculator, which is the 10 to the x key. That's the exponential key on your calculator. So ultimately, if we want to get back to the hydrogen ion concentration in solution, we do it by taking 10 to the minus pH power. Okay, so that's a simple manipulation we can do on our calculator. Now, once we have that hydrogen ion concentration, we have to then talk about the unit of that concentration. In other words, what are the units of that concentration value? So this is a unit we use in chemistry often called molar concentration or molarity. And we define it as an amount in terms of moles of hydrogen ion contained per liter of solution, which in our case would of course be liters of kombucha. So now that we have an understanding of molar concentration and pH, let's just take a look at a couple of samples involving kombucha. So let's compare two kombucha samples here. And I picked these two samples because the pH ranges here are essentially what we would normally find in a commercial sample that we would analyze. So a normal kombucha is going to range in pH from about 3 up to about 4. Now what we'd like to be able to do is to back calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of each one of these samples and then see what that means in terms of pH. So we know how to do this. The molar concentration of hydrogen ion is equal to 10 raised to the minus pH power. So if I have a pH of 4, that's 10 to the minus fourth power, which turns out to be 0 0.0001 or 10 to the minus fourth molar concentration in hydrogen ion. All right, so that's a fairly low concentration, but it's a concentration typical of what we would find in kombucha. Now, in the second sample, this one's a little lower on the pH scale. So this is three as opposed to four. So how does that correspond to an actual concentration of hydrogen ion? Well, we go through the same mathematical calculation, and what we find is that gives us 0 0.001 molar hydrogen ion concentration, or one times 10 to the minus third molar concentration of hydrogen ion. So what we see is that as we move lower on the pH scale, the concentration of the hydrogen ion in solution actually increases. So again, a lower pH means more hydrogen ion concentration in the solution. Now, ultimately, what we'd like to address is why this would matter to you as a kombucha brewer or consumer. So let's go back to the point of why pH is important to us in kombucha brewing and analysis. So we've kind of divided this up into three separate categories here of interest. The first is that measurement of pH allows us to some degree to track the progress of fermentation. So in our fermentation process, we're converting sugars 
to ethyl alcohol and also through bacterial action to organic acids which contribute to the low pH of our kombucha. So as that um, fermentation process progresses along, we're going to be using up sugars and converting those to higher concentrations of acids. So we should be able to track that as a decrease in pH as we move through the fermentation process. Now we also have below a video linked um, that we posted prior that goes into greater detail about the fermentation process. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you go check that out. The second thing that measurement of pH allows us to do is to define what we might call a food safe pH level. Now, one of the advantages to kombucha is that the um, bacteria that produce these organic acids are actually quite healthy and happy in a low pH environment, a highly acidic environment. Fortunately for us, most of the um, bad bacteria, the types that might give us off flavors, or worse yet, cause us to become ill, are not comfortable and don't thrive at these low pH values. So staying at a low pH keeps those bad bacteria out of our kombucha. And then the last factor that we want to think about is that measurement of pH allows us to loosely correlate the hydrogen ion concentration back to the flavor of our kombucha. And this comes back to the um, fermentation process. Remember in fermentation, we're using up the sugars as food for the yeast and bacteria, and the bacteria are generating organic acids. And it's these organic acids that are contributing to the high acidity or low pH of our kombucha. As a general rule of thumb, acids tend to taste sour. All right, so as the acid concentration increases and the sugar concentration decreases, we would expect to see an increased sour and less sweet taste to our kombucha. But here's the interesting part. As it turns out, as we mentioned in the fermentation process, we have multiple types of acidic bacteria that are generating multiple types of organic acids that contribute to the pH. And what we're going to find in our next video is that it's really hard to nail down exact flavor based upon a measurement as simple as pH. So that's going to be food for another video. Now, if you uh, like what you've seen here, make sure that you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And of course, make sure you visit us over at our website, www.culturedanalysis.com. And we'll see you next time.